Any question you would like to ask? Radhaswami Maharaj. Yes, please. Thank you, first of all, for everything that you've given me. I couldn't possibly list everything. I have a question in regard to physical seva, seva of the body. Yes, please. Okay. First of all, is it appropriate to express our gratitude for seva when satsangis do seva for us? Is it appropriate to express our thanks? Well, sister, we are all meant to help each other. If we want to run a certain organization, we have to work for it. So does that mean yes? Everybody can't expect if somebody has to deliver the goods. Right. So, seva creates humility in us. You cannot perform seva without love, without humility. Mm-hmm. Seva is not a sign of leadership. Mm-hmm. Seva creates humility in us, meekness in us. Mm-hmm. The more humble we are, the more meek we are, the better we are qualified to receive His grace. So when we see Savadars doing Seva for us and we feel gratitude for that, should we thank them? You can thank them. Okay. And there are many ways of thanking them. Words are not the only means to thank them. Right. And, and if someone is thanked, what should their response be? What do you say when you say, I made somebody thank you? What does the other person tell you? You're welcome. Then? You right. can expect that. <laughs> okay. It's a question of language only. Yes. In regard to physical seva, say a person had a flower garden and they decided that this was going to be your, the master's flower garden and that everything they did in that flower garden was for you. Is that seva? What do you mean by for me? For, I mean for the master. Do you mean that those flowers come to me? No. Then no. They are sold, the, sold in the market? No. Then? They just make you think of the master. You do it with love of the master in mind. They're an expression of love for the master. Well, you can remember the master with any excuse. But how can you call it, you see, that you are doing it for the love of the master? You are just doing for your own house. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. I've heard many times that you, you say that we all want to have a sense of belonging. Yeah. Can Seva give satsangis a sense of belonging to the master? And Definitely. To the, Definitely. And to the Sangha? Definitely. You see, we are serving the institution because the institution belongs to us and we belong to the institution. So we are serving the institution and master is the part of the institution, institution is the part of the master. Mm -hmm. So we are serving the institution, it it belongs to us and we belong to it. So serving other satsangis is also serving the master? It depends. What do you mean by serving other satsangis? Well, in, in the Sangha... Not in the individual capacity. No, just as part of helping get getting satsang ready and Definitely. things like that. Definitely. Okay, this is a hypothetical situation. I don't think it's ever really happened, but just as an example. Say um, some satsangis decided to set up a child care room for parents of... Uh, so that the parents could go to satsang and leave their children there. And then, say, the parents didn't use the room for whatever reason. Is that still seva? You see, if you are always conscious what you are going to do in a seva, that that has no effect of seva at all. So so long as it was done with love and humility, that's seva. As long as you do it with humility, with love, to serve another person, to please another person, that is seva. If you are always conscious what you are doing, Mm -hmm. and uh, it is seva, I am doing seva, you see, then you are doing it for your ego. I see. Mm -hmm. That that is no seva. Right, okay. Um, 
One last thing. In regard to money seva, if right now in the United States, um, practically the only way to get a tax deduction is to give charity, unless you have children and a mortgage. Um, if a person gives money to the Sangat in order to get a tax deduction, is that seva? <laughs> what do you mean by Sangat? Um, the Sangha, the group of people who come together to if hear... If they are authorized to collect it, yes. if, if they need it. Oh. If, if they need it to run the institution, to run the satsang meetings. And even if... All right, so the attitude is not the only thing. The Sangha has to need it. If, they, if at all they need it. If they don't need it, why should you give it? Okay. Now, if you give money to another worthwhile organization... Um, if you think your money is rightly spent there, uh -huh. rightly used there, there's no harm. Is it seva? I can't say it is seva, oh. but okay. it is rightly used. All right. Thank you, Maharaji. Master, when I look at the people who are living in my neighborhood, then uh, I can see many good people, people who... Uh, do their duty smilingly, who are full of love and devotion and so on. And then uh, when I look at myself, then I see so many weaknesses. And yet um, the Lord has chosen me to, to let me go home. This is uh, totally incomprehensible to me. He knows best whom he too has to mark. He doesn't ha have to mark the best. He can mark the worst also. <laughs> he knows best. <laughs> Everyone is better than us. Nobody is worse than us. When we look within our own self. Because yes. we know where we stand. We don't know anybody about anybody else all. Everybody is good. It depends from which angle you see him. Nobody is bad. If you rub him from a wrong, as a wrong side, naturally he will reflect, he will react. Everybody is good. Nobody is bad. I feel uh, sort of helpless because uh, I think I got something for nothing. Sister, only a patient goes to a doctor. Healthy person doesn't go to a doctor. Only a thirsty person will find a well. One who doesn't need to drink a water, he won't search a well. He knows best whom to mark. Who are we to judge? It is not one life that can tell us whether we are worth being marked or not. God knows since when we have taken birth. And since then we are moving about here in one form or another. So it is grace that He has put that seed of love and devotion and pull within every one of us. Let us respond to it. Let's make use of it. What do we know about other people? We know nothing about anybody. We are, only, like, we are only concerned with ourselves. Yes, I would like to make good use of it. So, um, uh, the only thing that I think perhaps I can do is, uh, that's an attempt at meditation. Yes, please do. <laughs> but then I was told, uh, that uh, we should not meditate more than three and a half hours a day. Is well, correct? if you have no other activities, then continue. I don't mind. But you have so many other activities in life. Not at the cost of your children, cost of your husband, cost of your job, cost of your multi-purpose engagements. No, I mean if we can afford the time. There's no harm. It's not injurious to sit and give more time, but generally one should give so much time. Mm -hmm. 
then mind starts reacting, rebelling. If you will too much force the mind. Please, a second question. Yes, please. Uh, sometimes it happens that uh, um, it seems that the mind is absolutely blank. Um, when I come back to normal consciousness, then uh, I don't know where I am. I don't even know in which world I am. Now, um, when that happens during Simran, then also I uh, lost all remembrances and uh, I even forgot the names. And so when I come back, I panic because I forgot the names. No, there's nothing to fear. It happens. We're so lost by Simran within ourself that even we forget our own self. There's nothing wrong with it. Nothing to feel frightened about it. No harm will come. Thank you, Master. Master, here. There's so much glare I can't. Yes, please. Yes. It is very clear to me, as you say, we don't have any free will. But I see so often uh, such angels find an excuse for not to sit for meditation, for not to try. Could you please tell us something about it? You have also already answered my question. You said they have excuse. What is an excuse? They say it is a master that brings us to the path and he will make us some time to sit for meditation. Then why do they eat every day? Why don't they wait for the master to feed them? Then they see delicious food in the shops, they are very tempting and they always like to eat. Why don't they wait for the master to buy it and give it to them? Why should they use their will there? It is only at the time of meditation they think of all this. We have will, but we have in, I mean, conditioned free will, limited free will, not absolute free will from the beginning. We have no free will. When the Lord has put us on the path, we have means to achieve the end. Why should we not put an effort to travel on the path? Why should we try to find excuses to delay the journey? Master, this question is for my husband who's at home. What should be our attitude or our frame of mind towards satsang? Towards what do you mean by satsang? Satsang, the meetings where we um, discuss the teachings. Sister, satsang is no ceremony. The purpose of holding these meetings is that somebody should, somebody should fill us or create in us the love and devotion for the Father so that we may build our meditation in that atmosphere. Satsangs are not held to eat cookies or to enjoy entertainments or meet friends or make a social ground to know each other. That is not the purpose of satsang. It depends upon what type of meetings are being held. If satsangi finds it useful, helpful, for the growth of his meditation, he should attend it. If he doesn't find that atmosphere at all, I don't force him to attend it. There's no necessity even to attend it. Much better to sit at home and attend to meditation rather than waste his time. It is not a social ground, not a platform to meet each other and find partners for each other to marry. <laughs> 
the purpose of satsang is very different so we should always try to create an atmosphere in which people should build their meditation we try to help each other to dissolve you see their problems their questions and strengthen each other's faith because we are always helpful to each other otherwise it's no ceremony thank you master i'm over here on yes, on your left yes please i learned that i wouldn't get an interview with you it's finished the interviews so i have three things four things to be clarified please if you allow me last time when i was here you said to me more meditation you didn't say how much i managed to bring it to two hours a day one in the morning one hour in the morning and one in the evening would two and a half hours be enough or do you mean more than that sister at the time of meditation everything is explained to us quite in detail you don't have to come individually to me to ask how much time you have to give to meditation i think instructions are very very clear at the time of initiation how much time we are supposed to give it yes but would two and a half hours be enough at least come to that first yes i can and then depends manage that then depends how much it absorbs your taste it absorbs your mind and then it depends upon your other activities of life your daily engagements i have to look after my parents for three days of the week and i have a big house and a big garden so and i have very little strength you know that's what i am saying it depends upon your individuals you see engagements so keeping in that view generally it is kept to and half an hour i think it's quite sufficient and meditation is not very joyful for me very often most of the time it is automatic and so it's just one more duty of all the other duties well sit as a duty first yes it's good even to sit as a duty and then i had made an invitation at my birthday which was a few days ago my 60th birthday and i ordered the dinner already because all the people i invited are eating meat and eggs so i ordered the dinner according to their taste and somebody told me i am loading a heavy karma upon myself if i do that sister the thing is that a thing which i don't relish myself i am never with myself if i serve to anybody else those things i am never happy we celebrate such occasions for happiness to celebrate happiness to share our joy and happiness with others if we are not happy with an ourselves what is the sense of making other people happy i don't quite understand when we don't live with ourselves by serving all those things to others what is the sense of making them happy then we are miserable to serve all those things to them it's also my family is not satsangi so i have to cook meat and all these things sister it depends upon the individual situations the main thing is we should not eat rest depends upon the individual circumstances i always try to adjust to the other people i That's say it depends upon individuals their circumstances i don't forbid you from doing that but the main thing is we should not eat ourselves yes and if you can refrain from serving serving the, them nothing like that but if you can't help it go ahead but at no cost you should eat yourself that is the main thing thank you master yes please here 
Over here. Yes, please. Why do I feel like a helpless ping pong ball, a ping pong ball between God and the worldly pleasures? It's like I feel like God pulls me, and these worldly pleasures, or you would call it illusions, why do I feel like they tear me apart? It's Can you repeat your question again clearly? Why do I feel like a helpless ping pong ball between God and the worldly pleasures? I feel like God pulls me and the world, all these, or you would call it illusions. Why well, brother, it's very simple. There's a combination of the soul and the mind. Tendency of the mind is downward. Tendency of the soul is upward, inward. Tendency of the mind is downward, outward. So mind is trying to pull us downward. When, when I... When and soul is trying to push us upward. <coughs> and that conflict is always going on within us. How can I stop it? By meditation. Just to draw the attention of the mind from outside, inside. So mind should also enjoy, you see, something better than the worldly players. Then mind becomes a great help to the soul. I can understand it in intellectual-wise, but these pleasures, they play tricks on me all the time. Yes, because since ages we have been enjoying them. But if you will constantly go on rubbing, on the sandstone, it does make effect. Thank you. Radha Swami. Yes. Um, Master, before I came here, I haven't been doing my duty in meditation and I feel a lot of sadness and a lot of guilt for this. And would you please forgive me? Sister, there's nothing to forgive about it. Attend to your meditation. Just forget what has happened, but make best use of the present now. Because I feel, I feel afraid when I go back and you, you're so far away from me. I don't feel that, that you're with me. Sister, your pull is within yourself. Nobody is away and nobody is near. We run away from our own self. And we try to withdraw ourselves from outside within ourselves. We have to fight with our own self. Just attend to meditation. May I ask you another question, please? Please, please. Um, Master, could you explain to me how to do Simran correctly? Um, should we think about the words as they are written or should we imagine how they sound? No, don't worry about the written word, don't worry about the sound. Whatever way you pronounce them, go on repeating them. The main thing is your mind should be hundred percent in those words when you pronounce them. Your mind should not be out of those words. Don't try to visualize how they are written or how they are pronounced. Forget about them. Okay. Thank you, but your Master. mind should be hundred percent in Simra. Don't let it run out. Okay. Thank you, Master. Maharaji, yes. um, in the middle. Maharaji, I haven't been able to see you uh, for eleven years. I'm in front of you, in the middle. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you can always tell me because there's so much light right yes, and left, yes. I can't see anything. Maharaji, why, why? Why do I have to be away for eleven years? <laughs> the main thing is now you are here. Why worry about the past when you are here now? Don't worry. And I ask for firm faith, Maharaji. I don't think I can do it just from effort or duty or willpower. I think the mind, I need that goad for the elephant. Brother, we should give our best fight with the mind, best fight to the mind. And don't show weakness to the mind. Soul is, soul is not frightened of being defeated. 
is always hopeful of winning the war. So never feel weak. Be strong and do your best. And Maharaji, I heard recently you said how you were like a prisoner and it makes me unhappy. Why unhappy? I like to think of you being able to... We are all prisoners in this creation. Who is not? Well, Who is not said, prisoner here? You said to me once, we are not prisoners, we have, are we? we have, everybody has chains around him in this creation. We are all tied by those chains. Chains of our religions, chains of our children, chains of the wife, our worldly loves, worldly pleasures. They are all chains around us. We are trying to break those shackles and fly back to the Father. We should more worry about those chains rather than this outside problems. Um. Kabir says... I'm happy, don't worry about myself. I'm all right. <laughs> I don't need more freedom than what I have. Thank you, Maharaj. Parakalo yanan eli na narthina mo na devkolini sa glika. Which language is this? Is it Spanish? No, he, he, he is Greek master. I see. Mm. Uh, he is a seeker. Uh, I had many physical and psychological problems for a long time. I was able to overcome them temporarily doing Kriya Yoga for three years. Four months ago, I read about Sanmat and I was very attracted to it. So I stopped doing Kriya Yoga. The result was that my problem started again. Please tell me what I can do to recover my peace of mind. Should I start Kriya Yoga again until my mind... Sister, I don't know what is this concept of Kriya Yoga. Was there some, is there some exercises? Yes, it's a series of about 20 practices. It's a rotation of consciousness around the various centers in the body, starting from Muladhar Chakra up to the third eye. Let and him do it if it helps him. He, he can do them. Let uh, him do it. He, the last part of his question was, should I start these practices? He thinks that he has to stop everything until he makes up his mind, whether he wants to ask for initiation in San Mat. If you see, Father's physical ailments, it concerns whether it concerns the mind or whether it concerns some physical things. Uh, he, ha he has said it's both, both his body and his mind. Because he... mind problems to some extent are taken care of by meditation. Mm -hmm. But physical, clinical problems, you see, meditation nothing, can't do anything at all. Uh, but he is not a satsangi yet, so he does not have the gift of meditation. And that's what I am saying him. Mm -hmm. Because uh, in Santmat, if you say, if he thinks by meditating we will be able to cure his uh, clinical problem, physical problem, that's not the case. That's the doctor's the only answer. Thank you very much, Radha Swami. Maharaji, in the middle. Yes. Um, this is very difficult for me to say but I've come a long way to be here, so I want to be honest with you. You initiated me a number of years ago, and ever since that time, I have found in my heart not love, but hostility towards you. I find it almost impossible to be in your presence without being overcome by anger towards you, the path, and your disciples. And it is painful for other satsangis, my wife for example, to be in the company of an initiate who does not feel love for you, has only doubts about the path and no faith. It seems to me that without love and devotion for you, a satsangi does not stand a chance at meditation. I want to ask you why I don't love you, why I don't believe you, 
Have you perhaps some special purpose in my plight? Could you throw some light on my situation? But why this reaction to your wife about all Oh no, this? My, I think it is painful for my wife when she hears my lack of faith, when I share that with her and other satsangis. But why your attitude is like this? I want you to tell me. I don't know. But, I mean, you have to explain rather than me about <laughs> all this. Well, what else can I add? Um, I, I suppose I feel called, but not chosen. Not chosen? Not chosen, yeah. I mean, I... It... In what way? Well, I was initiated. Yeah. Some time ago I asked for initiation. But since that time, I just don't feel drawn. I feel repulsed by the path, put off by the path. Um, you attend to meditation every day? Nearly every day. Nearly every day. You don't relish it, you don't enjoy it, or you don't want to do it? Or I don't want to do it, I force myself to do it. I you hope see, that, that you, have will... to, you have to remove your resistance to your meditation from within yourself. How do I do that? You have some other psychological problem of you in your life? Probably. Hmm? Probably I do, but I don't know what they are. But then you should have try to analyze them. Try to analyze myself. You can get really bogged down analyzing yourself. Naturally it's very painful for your wife to think. Yes, it is. To face like that. So I, I just wonder, you know, in, I obviously I don't understand what's going on in the universe, in myself. You see, you should attend to meditation without any resistance to it. I know I should, but it's, um, there's just so much resistance. I, I often wonder, I, I wonder why you initiated me. There can be a mistake. Ah. <laughs> Well, that's, that's a very good answer, sir. He knows I think, best. I think maybe there was a mistake. Well, as far as I know, he never commits any mistakes. Does he commit a mistake or doesn't he? He doesn't commit any mistakes. We commit mistakes not to understand his way of doings. You have read in the Bible, a farmer was taking a seed to his field. Some seed fell on the barren ground. Some seed fell on a rocky ground. Some seed fell on a marshy ground. Other seeds who fell in a fertile ground, they only gave result. That to about 170% or 75%. Yes. Sir. What is the meaning of that whole parable given by the Christ? Well, some seeds will take root and, f and flower, others will yes. wither away and die. Yes. Others will grow for a little time, and, but they will never come to full growth. Yes. Does that mean in this life? Yes, in this life. What would be the fate of a, of a satsangi who uh, ceased to meditation uh, halfway through his life? They will have to attend to the meditation sooner or later. Have to come back again? Must. Yes, I understand that, yes. Must. They have to complete their journey, they have to work. So I know I'm on it, I've got to complete it. He knows best you are on it as you have already covered it, I, I can't say about it. That he knows best. Thank you, sir. Maharaji? Yeah, yes. yeah, here. Yes, please. Wait. Who wants to go first? Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Right here, where well, the clay is gone, Mr. Maharaj, please. Right here. Thank you. First of all, I want to thank you very, very much, Maharaj, that we may be here, and we are very, very happy to be here with you. And I beg for your help. I have a problem I'm thinking of all the time. And that is the timing uh, of meditation. Um, you are told to listen to 
Simran, a certain time, you're told to listen to Bhajan, a certain time. Now, you cannot always program your day that way. Say you sit for meditation this time and this time, but then you sit and then you're called away. And sometimes you don't look at the clock or there is no clock or something. How much does it account for a day? How, do I, how does one solve that problem? Still, everybody has to adjust the timing according to one's engagements of the day. If you can get time in the morning, and depends upon how much time you get in the morning, you try to give it. Yes? Any time, whenever, it depends upon when you sleep, when you get up. Yes. And uh, then you can sit any other time, whenever you get, whenever you can snatch some time in the evening or before you go to sleep. Okay, but um, how much in the in evaluation of, of the differences about Simran's and Bajan's, how does it count? How do you <laughs> time it? <laughs> in, no, don't worry too much about uh, timing, you see. The uh -huh. main thing is that every time you sit in meditation, first you should give time to Simran, yes. then to Shabbat. Yes. At least three-fourths of the time should be given to Simran in every sitting, yes. and at least one-fourth of the time should be attended by Shabbat. Yeah. Yes, sir. But if you, if you sort of, you do your Simran and you, you intend to do for, say, for two hours or whatever, and then you are called away, so you can't, cannot continue to do your bhajan. Then there's no problem. Interrupt. Uh, it's okay. Sometime, next time you sit, you give that. I mean, sometime we cannot even sit. Uh -huh. Our engagements become such. Uh -huh. We shouldn't be so rigid about these things, you see. One has to live with life. We are the part of a certain chain. Yes. And uh, we cannot break the chain. We have to go along with that chain. Okay. But this is normally what we should do. Uh-huh. So I carry that chain then. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Maharaji. Maharaji? Yes? Is it in the interest of the soul to be for the soul to be selfish soul is selfish part of the divine ocean it is full with love and devotion for the father it has nothing else in the soul it's only helpless due to the mind but then why does our soul knows nothing else except the father but why do, then why does the soul's selfishness sometimes become annoying to others or even to ourselves? It is the mind. It is not the soul. Soul has no interest in this creation. Soul doesn't discriminate one from the other. Soul doesn't care for anybody in this creation. Soul is only knows one thing, the Creator. And only yearning to go back to the Father. It is the mind, and mind has to become selfish, otherwise soul will never get released from the clutches of the mind. And this selfish, not selfish, is a comparative word. This is our own concept that we are selfish. Now I'll give you an example. There are so many medical students studying in the college. One boy is working very hard. Other boys blame him that you are very selfish, whole day you are studying and don't come and play with us, don't enjoy this life with us, don't run about in the bazaars and streets and other fancy places you see with us. You are very selfish. He, he, he has to hear all that. And he is the one who becomes the doctor. And he helps so many other people. And those people who are not supposed to be selfish, trying to be, help each other, enjoy each other's life, they all fail, they cannot achieve the object of becoming a doctor, then use this to the society. Now who has gained? The doctor who are supposed to be selfish? Or the other boys who are, who are wasting their time in foolish pursuits? Whom you will call it selfish? The playboys are that boy who was studying, who has become a doctor, who has become useful to the society. 
These are our competitive words. Selfish, not selfish. We say we are very selfish, we are attending to meditation, we are not giving them time out to friendship, our relative, we don't call on them, we don't go for merrymaking, we don't go for holidays. We are very selfish. Well, we have to face all this. But we will be a better member of the society, we will be able to help people much more than the others. This is a comparative word, selfish. Mm -hmm. This is our own interpretation of the word selfish. Thank you. Master, yesterday uh, you told me that uh, when we meditate too many hours a day, that the mind starts revolting. I say if you give too much time. Yes. Yes. Now, how do I notice that uh, I give too much time? Is it uh, just um, difficulty in concentration or is there... You see, if you um, start that you, have, you will not do anything, you are not relishing anything inside, you say, I am not going to come out of the room for eight hours, I go on sitting, next to your mind won't sit at all. It starts revolting. So slowly and slowly get into the habit of giving time. So a measure would be that uh, if we uh, enjoy meditation, as long as we enjoy meditation, yes, we could go increasing. Yes, as long as we enjoy meditation, that is the main thing. Also, I wonder, um, is there another way of the mind to revolt than just uh, by not enjoying meditation? What do you mean, by other way? Like, um, would perhaps uh, the... Uh, um, for instance, uh, would, could the mind produce bad health? My mind produce what? Bad health, ill health, as a as a reaction. It depends upon individuals how they treat their mind, how they fight with their mind. It can react sometime in a violent way if you too much force in your mind. Yes, but then how do you distinguish um, in the case of ill health whether it's coming from uh, a revolting mind? You or always know. That's, or why, from that's why saints say that this time which we have fixed, it's sufficient. Provided we are regular and we are punctual. That is much more essential than giving more time. Except when it's enjoyable. Well, if you can afford another one hour or half an hour, perfectly all right. But not at the cost of your daily living, daily activities and daily responsibilities and obligations. You are a member of a certain society, you have certain obligations, certain responsibility. You can't run away from them. Yes, Master, I, I will do what you had asked me to do. But please excuse me, my mind is so slow to understand. Okay, okay. Thank you. Master, I'm to your left. Yes. Um, I'm not old enough to be initiated yet, but, and you also say that we need to be able to stand on our own two feet. And sometimes I get really afraid of going to school because I'm afraid that it will pull me away from the path. Well, sister, we all have been educated. We have all come from schools and colleges. Why should you shirk education? I don't know, I just get scared, even not with school, but just experiencing life, I'm afraid that it's going to take even, me away from... Even otherwise, if you want to go to school, even then you will be experiencing life. Even then you have to face your life. You can't run away from it. Thank you. Well, Raji, yes. there's a theoretical question and some very short practical ones, if I can ask them. The theoretical one is about humility. Yesterday you spoke about seva done with love and humility. Love 
I can understand a little because this human love which gives me some idea of what true love is. I don't think I can feel a little humility. Either I feel humility or no humility. So the question is, what is true humility? Well, brother, seva can never be done without love. And if you do seva, humility automatically comes. Seva is always done with love and humility. Humility is a part of love. If there is love, automatically there will be humility in it. There can be no love without humility. Love makes you humble. Love makes you meek. Love means you want to do which pleases the other person. You never like to do what pleases you. You like to do what pleases the other person. That is love. And that is humility before another person. Seva is done to please another person. Seva is not done so much to please you. When you please another person, and the reaction will be that you will be more happier to do seva. There is more happiness in giving than taking. More happiness in donating than accepting any gift. More happiness in helping somebody than getting help from anybody. People have a wrong concept that they become more happy when they accept in something in charity or accept something in, you see, in help. The pleasure that you get by helping somebody, making somebody happy in life, nothing to compare with that pleasure. You have certain satisfaction with yourself that you have been able to do something good for somebody. Thank so you. seva is always done with love. Otherwise it's not a seva. Seva is not mechanically working with hand. Seva is the int our intention to please another person to do something for another person so that the other person may become happy what I am doing. So it means there is certain love given us for the other institution, for the other person, for which we are doing something. Automatically there will be humility. Humility is the part of love. Seva is the part of seva. Love is the part of seva. May I ask the practical question? Yes, please. One is about um, doing meditation in a public situation. When we're initiated, we're told that we shouldn't meditate so that our neighbor knows that we're meditating, if I, got it, if I remember correctly. When we come here in this hall, there's a kind of natural attraction to meditate here. Well, that question is that we have not to sit in meditation for public demonstrations. If you are sitting in meditation here, your purpose is not that you should be noticed. Your purpose is to find a corner to sit in meditation. Because you don't find any other place to sit here. Is it all right to do bhajan? You know how. Is it but, all right to do bhajan doing that? The other, other thing is that some people will like to give a public demonstration of their meditation. So that people know that I am sitting in meditation. They intentionally try to do it. As Christ said, you see, don't blow trumpet of your prayers. Don't blow trumpet of your charity. You may often, I mean, you see that people are uh, doing uh, similar of some Japji Saab and all these things, right in the cross sitting, so the people passing, going for walks, should all notice him that he is doing something. That is not the purpose, it is doing to concentrate. So do you, I mean, we don't do these things for public demonstrations. We do for our own good. Yeah. That is the purpose. Then another practical thing, thank you, Maharaj. Was on Wednesday, the professor mentioned lottery tickets. I've always had this doubt, knowing that there is no such thing as chance. Is gambling in any form compatible with the Sant Mat teachings? I mean, innocent gambling I don't bother much, but one should not be a gambler. 
and I said, thank you, buy a lottery ticket. Let him buy, let him try his luck. <laughs> but he shouldn't be obsessed by gambling. He shouldn't be obsessed by gambling. Nothing, nothing can be worse than gambling. Mm -hmm. It's a disease. Gambling has become a disease in people. They cannot live without gambling. They will stake even their wives in gamble. Mm -hmm. Everything, they are blind. They don't know what they are doing. They become obsessed with gambling. On the same point, Maharaji, playing the stock market, buying stocks and shares is a form of gambling also. We're trying to make a profit, is that... I know practice? nothing about stock and shares because I've never dealt, dabbled in these things, you see. I, I don't know much about these things. Some people do it, they invest in the business point of view. Some people are 24 hours on the telephone, selling and buying, selling and buying. Ultimately, their heart patient, or diabetic, or blood pressure are the quit from the stage very soon. I'm leaving tomorrow, Maharaj. Can I ask two other quick ones? Please. One is about procrastination, which is not a, a very pleasant... What is that? Procrastination. A person can be born procrastinating. It's not a habit. He's born just with a natural tendency to procrastinate, not to put things off till, till tomorrow, which I think is a great obstacle in St. Matt. And it's not a habit that he's got into, but that from birth he just procrastinates. Is there any remedy for this? What is the problem with that? It's a serious problem because you keep putting everything off. So you put off meditation, you put off uh, the urgency, you, you... You put off even your eating every day, or sleeping every day? No. Hmm? Or going to job every day? I suppose it's relative procrastination. Then, then you are the judge what to postpone, what to not to postpone. But still it is under your control. So you are not a victim of it. So you know you do it. Right. Last one, Maharaji. Um, we're told that we shouldn't share our inner experiences, we shouldn't talk about them. But there are also outer experiences. Coming to see Maharaji, there can be experiences that seem to have significance, and we talk about them, we like to talk about them. There's no harm in talking these things, not to, to build your ego. Just, no harm. just a straight account? Yes. Thank you. It seems to be not so easy to get uh, sharp even after initiation. Um, is it enough to have good feelings on the Sant Mat path and loving for you, or is it the main thing to get uh, the real experience of sharp? And why does so many satsangis do not have the sharp experience when the Sadhguru? They will both are essential. Both are essential. One should lead to another. Both have to be attended to. Maharaji, I'm on your left. Yes, please. So I'm pleased to meet you in the physical. Um, I have a few questions. Uh, can you tell me, are you in Satkand? I'm right here before you. Yes, I can see that. <laughs> Only believe what you see that. Yes. I have seen. Then, believe this. But I am not your initiate. Then, what does that work to you? So, what is your connection to other masters? In what way? Are you connected and working for the good of all humanity in connection with other masters? Or are you working only for your own path, for your own... I don't know about these distinctions which you are, you are trying to create. You see, every master is responsible only for the marked sheep. Mm -hmm. 
He is not responsible for anybody else. And those allotted one automatically are drawn to him. He doesn't have to go to announce and call them. They automatically find their way to him. Do you therefore only love your own disciples and not all humanity? No, why not? I not hate anybody at all. No question of my, but nobody, I mean, nobody hates anybody at all. I didn't say hate, I said love. Do you love all the humanity or do you direct your love only to your own disciples? We love the one who is in whole humanity, mm. who is in everywhere. That is the Lord. No question of humanity, even the birds, even the animals, even the insects. Wherever his effulgence, his light is there, we love him. And from wherever he reflects, we love them. We don't love any person. We love the one who is in those persons. Do you know what is psychic starvation? Psychic starvation? Yes. Can you explain me that? That is when one starves because the feeling of God's love is removed from the body and when one does the will of God, which may be to give, to serve, to be devoted, to take if something is to be taken, to love or um, to speak when one is afraid to speak, then the starvation goes away. To uh, find that somebody is in need and uh, the, the, it is psychic starvation. One starves Sister. because somebody needs help. Sister. God's love can never be removed from anyone. Because as long as the soul is within us, soul is always yearning for going back to its own destination, going back to the Father. So that love under no circumstances can be removed from anyone. As long as the soul exists in us, love for the Lord will also exist in us. It cannot vanish, it cannot go, no matter what you do. It may lie dormant. You may not be conscious of it, you may not be aware of it. The time may come when you become conscious and aware of it. Then it will, will make you helpless to go back to Him. But love is always there within every one of us, whomsoever He has created. Because the soul is in the body. And soul is nothing but love for the Lord. Yes. So nobody can take away the love of God from within us. It's the wrong way of thinking that psychologically you'll be able to take away the love from us. That will remain. We are trying to help people to awaken that love, to strengthen that love, help to grow that love, help to mature that love. Help to put life in that love, so that it may grow and grow to become one with the Father. Nobody can take away that love from us. But do you understand that I am asking, is there a cure for psychic starvation? What do you mean by psychic starvation? When, when I am not, we are not starving at all, the love is there within us. But then the whole we, world is crying out for love. Then? They are not starving. <laughs> if they are crying out for love, love is coming from within. And how they are starving? Starving is only then when they don't have love. Yes, that is what I mean. And but if they one, have love. If one feels the cries of humanity and it takes place as a physical uh, phenomena, I don't know, you're just playing with the words. If somebody needs help, yes. and it is the middle of the night, I wake up with psychic starvation. What do you mean by psychic starvation? That's what I'm trying to know. Star 
starvation, you know what it feels like to be hungry, yes. to need food. But this is yes. not need for physical food, it is a need love for spiritual is, food. Love is always starving. Yes. Because it is never satisfied. We are always starving. No lover is satisfied with the beloved. No matter how much the beloved gives to the lover, a lover is always wanting more and more, more and more, more and more. So lover is always starving. Yes. So the question of starvation doesn't arise. This starvation controls my whole life. You don't feel the love? And I feel the love. You feel the love? Oh yes. All right, then give it a chance to grow. <laughs> okay. Um, are you doing anything to help free humanity from entities and what are you doing? What do you mean by entities? Spirits that are living in the astral worlds and are still attached to this physical world and they have not Don't been able to progress. Don't worry about the spirit in the astral world. We, you, you should worry about each other. People are killing each other. People are hating each other. People are, you see, playing havoc with each other. And people are suffering. Play, you see, try to help them rather than worrying about the spirit which are in the astral forms. I am speaking about people in this world who are suffering due to being attacked and possessed by entities. Do you do any work on this Sister, thing? we are all possessed by each other. And that, that creates our suffering. Why blame those entities? We all blame each other. For each other, see, for our suffering in this creation. We have jointly created this atmosphere to suffer. We do not know how to live together. We do not know how to live in peace how to live in love. We do not know how to distribute, how to sit together to eat. We do not know how to share what the Lord has been giving us in this creation. So we are the cause of suffering for each other. Why blame those entities? I am not blaming the entities. They are our own karmas. You, you explain the masses. They should at least treat each other as homo humans. I have worked very hard to do that, but I have also come into connection with many people who are suffering. I do not blame the entities because it is their own faults that they have made connection with extra spirits. But these spirits live in and around the people all the time. They are a hindrance to rising in spirituality, rising to God. They try to prevent um, people being normal. Uh, I have many examples because I have worked with them. All right. uh, are you doing anything to help people? And what are you doing? I'm doing nothing. <laughs> to be a great prophet. I'm doing nothing, sister. You do not work on this level. I just do my humble duty, that's all. <laughs> Please excuse me, I ask also in humility. Oh, no, no, don't worry, don't worry, I'm not worried about these things. <laughs> <laughs> Maharaji? Yes, please. I have a threefold question and I wrote it down so that I wouldn't ramble too much. How do you bring the attention to the eye center to do the simran there? when it has apparently been doing it from lower down, probably from the throat. And how do you stop the simran flowing from the low, from lower down where it has been going on sister, automatically for I, a very long I'll, time? I'll tell you, sister. Sister, if you are at the middle of a hill and you want to go to the top, you don't have to come down to the bottom and start going upward again. You start right from there where you are, upward. We are all at the eye center. If you forget anything, you want to remember it, automatically your hand comes here. Sometimes you forget it, automatically your hand comes here to remember what you have forgotten. 
This is our thinking center. This is a place of the soul and mind not together. So right, in, instead of coming right downward from the lower chakras and pulling upward by Simran to eye center and then trying to go up, why not right from here go up? So we should not be conscious about the lower chakras at all. Forget about them. Master, I don't know if it's at a lower chakra or where it is. It seems to be the attention gathers in the mask of the face. But I, it, I find it very, very difficult and almost impossible to bring it to the eye center unless the uh, exception of the times when I feel that Master himself is, is pulling my attention up and focusing it there. I mean, I haven't... The, the place of effort I don't understand because I'm not able to make it go up where it should be. You said the other day that um, we, some of us don't know how to knock or where to knock. Well, intellectually I know we knock at the eye center and we knock by someone, but I, I don't um, know where and how to do it and I'm not able to do it myself. It seems like the only time it happens is when it's Master's special grace. Sister, you should try to contemplate on the form of the Master while doing Simra. If you yes. cannot succeed in visualizing that form, you think you are sitting in the presence of the Master and doing Simra. You have to feel that you are sitting in the presence and doing Simra. That will help you to be there and to concentrate there. Should that be done, Master, whenever we're doing Simran or just during our meditation time? When you are doing Simran. Also. When you're doing Simran. Uh, and when you are able to reach to the light, <coughs> then you need not worry in order to, you need not worry to visualize the form of the Master, then you can keep your attention in the light. Light will serve as Dhyan. Then keep your attention in the light and do Simran. That will help you to concentrate there. Then in meditation, Master, should I just begin the names at whatever level I can reach and hope and beg for the Master to pull the attention up? Just do Simran, automatically the prayer is there. Sim meditation itself is a prayer. May I ask one more question, Master? Well, okay, carry on. Thank you. Um, when Master tells us to do a certain thing for our own good um, or to refrain from doing something, by telling us that, does He also give us the strength and the ability to carry forth and accomplish that thing that He tells us to do? Well, he doesn't lag, His grace doesn't lag behind after He puts on the path. I always say that he is more anxious to pull us to his level than we are anxious to go back to him. Then he does help us to do it. Definitely. Thank you, Maharaji. Please, please give me the strength and the acceptance to live in thy will without rebellion and without depression, but to be cheerful about what you send me. Thank you. Alles klar.